Got him. Starting to get hungry now. Hey guys, Shane Walser here, Yak and Lace Crappy Guides. We've been out here today and we are about lunchtime and we've been beating the heat. Just wanted to give you a few tips and tricks, uh, kind of what we're doing. Uh, we're chasing these fish on brush and we've had to change up three to four different patterns a day. So what we started out with this morning is we went running uh, jigs and plastic. Rockport Rattler jig head with a custom magic jig curly tail. It's got a decent bite on it. Oh, not bad fish. Oh, Rockport. Uh, come back around, nose fish got finicky, we're chasing it, not committing to it. Pulled her plastics off of our Rockport Rattler jig heads and went to the minnows and added minnows to it. Uh, what that did was allow us to get into the brush with that Rockport Rattler jig head. And when that minnow was shaking, he was rattling those rattles inside and it was causing those fish to come up and out of the brush and we got a few more bites on it. As we moved on through the morning, we noticed that even changing those up, we seen a few changes as well. The fish would see it, they followed it up, and then they'd stop. And we ended up having some fish chase it, chase it, and wouldn't bite it. So what we did is we changed up, just went to a basic minnow rig with just an eighth ounce barrel weight with a end line plastic bobber stop so that way you can change the length of how much line you got out for your minute to swim. We started off with about six inches of line on there, and we still had them chase a little bit. We lengthened up to about, about 14 inches where that minnow could swim around a little bit more and that triggered the bite where they jumped on and held onto it. So just changing that presentation, going from six inches of swim where he could do to making it where he could swim around double made them fish jump on and start biting a little better. Strategy on these is get the bait in front of the fish this time because they're either going to eat or they're not going to eat. So the more times you can put it in front of them, the better you're going to be. If that fish is going to eat, he's going to eat. Um, a lot of times this year, changing up the baits is gonna be a lot of things too, going from jigs to minnows and back and forth. Because once these fish see, you know, once you catch a few fish out of a brush pile or catch a few out of them, you're gonna see them change. So that's why we'll switch back and forth with, you know, a jig head and a minnow, run just a plain minnow rig, and then run, you know, plastics of different colors and sizes. Yeah, the water is 85 degrees right now. So these fish are, you know, they're gonna only come out and eat when it's time for them to do their thing. They're gonna lay back in the cover and, and just relax. So early mornings, mid morning, you just gotta catch them when they start firing up. Oh yeah, a lot of times you can come out in the mornings do with it or do good with, you know, first couple hours and then late afternoons. But you know we've been out here before too in the middle of the middle of the day, 12, 1 o'clock, and it's 90 some degrees. And some days you just fish. they just want to eat. <laughs> We're using the Catch the Fever Precision Cast Rods, designed by Whitey Outlaw, Catch the Fever Outdoors. I'm using a six foot six with a Bass Pro Shops Micro Elite and six pounds Super Stretch Slime Line. So on the Super Stretch line, I'm running six pound. This Super Stretch was designed by Whitey Outlaw and uh, Ronnie Caps. And this line is designed to stretch 30% and come right back to where it's at. Most monofilaments will stretch anywhere from you know eight to, to 14 percent and once it stretches it's there and then the next time it stretches in that point it snaps. On this line it was designed for so when that, that big fish hits when you're spider rigging or casting or whatever you got this line's more of a buffer just like using the action of that rod now you've got the action of that rod paired with a stretch of that line to where you're not pulling the hooks out of these, these fish mouth as easy as it used to. So if you have never tried it, make sure to give them a shout, uh, catchthefever.com and, and look up some championship edition uh, super stretch. It's in moss green is what we carry it in now. The main reason is the crappy's mouth so, so thin, you know, if you, hook, if you hook a crappy good in the top of the mouth and the bone, he's not coming off. But if you get anywhere around the sides and the bottom where you can see daylight through it, you want, to, you want as much give in the rod, as much give in the line. You want that shock absorber there so that way 
he can't kick back and spit that hook out. Got it. So we just let it work across top of that pile a little bit. Notice the fish got down there tight, so just kind of let it fall right down inside the, fall right down in the pile. You're gonna get hung up, you're gonna have problems, but when we let it fall down in there, it'll get their attention and hopefully get a few more bites. But you do end up losing a lot of G, a lot of rigs, and you can keep pounding through these methods, changing up your, uh, changing up what your presentation is to the fish, especially when you're working the same piles and there's a lot of fish on it. But as you move around, have two or three rods look hooked up, ready to go. So that way you're changing these over, just grabbing rods and not retying every time. But um, if you got any questions or are you ready to book a trip or anything, give me a shout. Like I said, Shane Walser, Yakin Lakes Crappy Guides. You can find me on Facebook or give me a call, 336-978-3737. Everybody stay cool.